Hello and welcome back to No Bullshit. Today we return to talking about the lockdowns currently going on across the United States of America and in other parts of the world too. We're still struggling to handle this pandemic and this health crisis that's been plaguing us for months now. And as this thing goes on, things have been changing across the nation, especially here in the United States. Firstly, we've been locked down pretty much across the board for about two months now. And recently, places have started to consider reopening. A lot of places have already reopened, including including Florida, Georgia, other places uh, across the middle of America. And in addition, a lot of places have doubled down on lockdowns. And if you think about it, you'll actually see this is a very political thing. I actually have a tweet here from uh, Kevin Sorbo that kind of spells it out perfectly. It says, 26 red states open, 24 blue states stay shut. Clearly, this is not about the virus. Now, Take that as you will, but it is a very politically divided thing. The red states are opening. That's the conservative ones. They're taking caution already, and they've already considered their options. We've got people ready. They're being clean. Things have been prepared. People have got their masks and their sanitizer, so they've decided to slowly reopen some things. In addition, the blue states are the Democratic ones. They're staying closed, and some of them stu- still do need to be staying closed, but it still kind of, in a way, goes back to them being poor leaders and fumbling this whole situation. For example, New York City, Chicago, and LA are both big cities that still have a lot of problems with the virus, a lot of cases, still many deaths. It's very tragic, but those are also liberal-run cities and have been liberal-run for many, many years, and that's part of the problem too. And so this is a problem they've been dealing with for a long time, and now we're going to talk about another very liberal state that had this issue come up in Oregon. Oregon is a state that's still locking down and still being very strict. And here we're about to talk about a hairstylist. This is a group of hairstylists who try to reopen their shop in Oregon. But they've had some very difficult times trying to deal with that. This lady is the owner of the shop. She's about to go into detail about what happened. And it's very bad. She's been harassed by her government officials there. And the point of today's story is, before we even get to the video, first of all, this is politically divided. Like we said, reopening and closing and doubling down. This is a very politically divided thing. So at the same time, while I want to feel bad for this chick, which I do, she gets harassed and has very bad things happen to her because she tried to reopen. But at the same time, these are the states they chose to live in, and these are the officials these people have been electing. Same thing's been happening in California. Los Angeles just announced they're going to stay locked down for three more months. And they also had a couple company owners in California talk about reopening despite the lockdowns. We talked about a story where Elon Musk and his Tesla company really wanted to reopen and they went ahead and went for it. And now they're kind of dealing with a few things of red tape, but that was successful. And the same kind of story happened with Joe Rogan and he was threatening to move to Texas to get out of California so he could do stand-up comedy again. And now we're bouncing back to Oregon and this story and this video you can see right here. We've got some salon hairstylists trying to reopen, and they've been treated very poorly by their state. But at the same time, remember, this is a state, and these are officials that they chose and elected. They chose to live in this very liberal state of Oregon. Um, feel really sorry for them. It's It sucks, but at the same time, Oregon is just like a mini California, more like hipster version of California. So with all that said, let's check out this video and see what happened to the salon owner. Um, the main reason I'm here today is I want the public to understand what's happening to me by the government in full detail, the intimidation and the bullying, um, all because I'm trying to earn a living and provide for my family. So I'm going to walk you guys through the timeline of what the government has tried to do to me in the last 10 days. And I hope that you are as ashamed as I am. Okay. Well, I think this is good point. Before we get to what happened even, she said she's ashamed. She's calling out her government. Um, She obviously is getting a wake-up call here. I wonder if she's going to take it the right way because, like I was saying before in the intro, the way I would take it is you guys need to stop voting in radical Democrats in your government. This is a local issue mostly. This is your mayor, your governor, your representatives in your area. 
they're the ones controlling what's going on in your state in this situation at the least. Now, I have a feeling she might be implying this is like a Trump thing. I feel like these people might be putting their blame in the wrong places. It might say, hey, Trump's the problem. It's a conservative's problem. We can't blame Democrats. They're kind of uh, living in a bubble. They don't understand that there is a problem with them. They've been too indoctrinated for too long. So I don't know if they really realize that. That's a question we might not even get the answer to, but that's the way I would take it before we even get further into this. And I think you guys understand. So on March 2nd, you all know that I publicly announced that I was gonna be opening my salon on May 5th. And I was doing so to support my family and provide an income for my family. On May 4th, the day before I even opened, OSHA came into my salon and informed me that they would return the next day. And if I opened, they would issue me a $1,000 citation. And if I didn't comply and shut my doors, they would then issue me a $70,000 citation. Ouch. $70,000 to a regular old uh, hair salon is totally detrimental. I mean, that's an obvious fine that's pointed at them to shut them down. I mean, it's like you, they know they're not going to be able to pay it. Possibly one of them has some crazy savings account, or maybe the company has a little petty cash, but that is a lot of money. And this is not a big corporation. We're talking about uh, independent hair salon. As far as I know, I'm not sure how big it is, but if these guys are all the stylists, I mean, it's probably just a regular salon like a Great Clips or a Supercuts. I mean, I'm sure they're not corporate like that. They're probably independent and have some hipster name like In Style or Style Bus or something. I don't know. They probably have a cool name for it, but yeah, that's a big, big find for a company just trying to open. Granted, their state said they weren't supposed to open. This is in Salem, Oregon, and they're supposed to stay closed, but she's trying to go against it. This is something that's happened before with other people. Like we said, Elon Musk and uh, Joe Rogan and other companies have tried to kind of step over the line and push for it, but I guess it's not working out for them. And I hopefully I hope they really realize that it's the Democrats they've elected that are being so authoritarian on them. And like we mentioned in that tweet from earlier, it's the blue states that are locking down more and the red states that are opening up for a number of reasons. And at that point, I was almost broken and beaten and I almost decided not to open. And with the help of my political experts and my attorneys, um, we moved forward. And on May 5th, we did open our doors and myself and some of my independent contractors were able to come in for a week and work as is our right and provide for our families. Um, there's about 23 artists that uh, work in the salon and the last I checked within the last week, not a single one of them has received any unemployment or government assistance. Okay, so they're not getting their unemployment. They need to work. It's a desperate situation. I understand that. Uh, again, though, this problem comes back to the unemployment from Oregon. We're talking about Oregon, a very liberal, a very terrible. Uh, Portland, Oregon is one of the things I think of. Portlandia is that show that was just the super hipster, the most funny thing ever. They made fun of hipsters all the time. And I think that reflects here. I mean, if you look at the girls she's with, I mean, Oregon is also a very white state, so they're all white girls. But this one that's leading this and speaking, I mean, she's got the pretty much the most SJW look you could imagine. I mean, granted, she's pretty. She's not ugly like most of them that are uh, bigger and stuff, but she's got tattoos. She's got the nose ring. She's got uh, the fake eyelashes. Like, everything is pointing to this sort of, like, tattooed hipster girl that's obviously going to be, like, liberal, like, feminist. She's, like, femme. She's being very femme. Uh, could be, like, one of those lipstick lesbians or something like that. Nothing wrong with that either. I mean, this is just me kind of guessing by the way uh, she presents herself. And since she is presenting publicly and this is a public video, I think it's worth noting that because they come from this very left-leaning state and they're complaining about fees and unemployment and not being able to open. So hopefully one day someone like this will realize they need to stop voting in Democrats. And on May 6th, the next day, my lease with the city of Salem was threatened, claiming that I was violating the order and therefore violating my lease. So yet another agency that was coming and threatening me. And if you can possibly believe this, on May 7th, Child Protective Services showed up at my home. What? They questioned my husband and I. 
They questioned my child without me present. They searched our home. Okay, that's hard to watch. I'm sorry. That's tough. That's tough. I feel bad for her, but at the same time, it's a little, I don't know, maybe a little manipulative. Like the camera, the way the camera zooms in and she starts dropping those fake tears. I mean, I'm sure she's really upset too. That sucks. And it is a bad story, but they're definitely using this mom kind of angle. This is what the news does. They play with your emotions. They get crying people on. But really, it is a bad thing. They're getting all the agencies they can to throw at this company, at this salon. I mean, coming at you with Child Protective Services, that is super shady. And it shows that this town, Salem, and this state, Oregon, is doing whatever they can to lock people down. They're using all means necessary. They started off with OSHA, which is like... Like the government's sort of uh, worker protection company, their organization to make sure that people are safe. And then they went with the lease, which goes through the city, which is directly controlled by the officials they elected, the liberals in charge. And then on top of that, the state, she's complaining about unemployment. She's complaining about ch child protective services. This is all coming from a very liberal state who's trying to lock people down, trying to retain control. They want to keep themselves in power. And also, let's talk about the political part of this, because since we haven't yet today in this video, the political motivation here is Democrats want to keep things shut down for as long as possible to run this country to the ground, and that way their election prospects will be better in November. There's a presidential election here in a few months in November, and the worse we are in the country, the better their chances are of defeating Trump. Trump was doing really good before all this crisis happened. In 2019, things were never better. We had the best economy, low unemployment. Things were looking amazing, and then all of a sudden this virus hit, and that was the big curveball that could throw everything off. And the Democrats are really trying to latch onto that and say, hey, let's keep the government and everything shut down all the way through November. That's our best chance to win this. And that's why states like Oregon, California, Illinois, New York, that's why they're staying locked down. That's why this is lockdown versus opening on party lines. Now, one could say, oh, maybe the Republicans are just opening states to try to help Trump too. I mean, that's that's considerable. I could see the counter argument, but really opening states is what the people want. The gross amount of people, the majority, they want to reopen. The only people trying to keep things locked down are Democratic politicians and their operatives, people in the news, people um, fear mongering, like the real people, us, the citizens, we want to get out. We want to do stuff. We want to be safe too. We're going to wear masks and gloves and wash our hands and all that stuff. But we also want the chance to kind of open, to work, to get some stuff at the store, to go to a restaurant, to live our lives. And yeah, there might be some danger, but there it really is always danger when you leave your house, even in your house. You can just have danger in your life every day you live. So to keep things locked down over and over for longer and longer, it's just a political motivated thing. It's a way to go after Trump. And I'm glad to see it happen in a way. I'm not glad that there's this turmoil and that people are suffering. I don't want this lady to cry. I'm really hoping her family and her co-workers are doing okay, but I really do hope she puts the blame on the right people here. This is the kind of thing that could change a Democrat into a Republican. Like this is the kind of changing, life-changing event. Things happen in your life. Like for example, I remember a lot of people turn Republican when Reagan was president. The Reagan era had a lot of people going back to conservatism. And now I think this might be happening again. And it's happening because of the Democrats actually. This is a accidental, inadvertent, repercussion of the way they're acting. They think they can shut down the country longer in order to win and to beat Trump, but really they're turning their own fans against them. They're getting their Democratic voters and their base to realize, hey, this government isn't really helping us. They're not for us. They don't want us to make money. The Democrats aren't for the workers or for the people anymore. They're for themselves and getting themselves more power and also money corruption. They want to take down a president. Trump is the one who's about the people. He's the one getting the economy going, lowering unemployment, getting everyone working, stopping our adversaries and you know, fixing the borders and defense and stuff like that. And this is the kind of eye-opening situation that I really hope this girl in the video here, this girl with the nose rings and all her coworkers, I hope they realize this is what happens when you elect Democrats over and over and you get into a crisis and now they're going to take all this power. And hopefully they recognize that and turn things for the better. And this has actually already started to happen in a few places. California recently turned a few seats to red. They recently elected a few 
conservative Congress people and stuff in a sort of new election that happened a week ago. And that is the turn for the better. This is California. This is the most liberal place in the world. And California turning a few state seats and a few spots and a few politicians to conservative, that's a big push. And that could be happening across the country. I mean, I feel like Oregon might have a situation like this. Like maybe if these guys wisened up, these salon owners and operators, they would be voting for conservatives. Maybe other states will wisen up too. New York City could see a conservative wave again. They could see another Giuliani mayor there or something. Who knows? This could be the the dawning of a new conservative movement. And sure, it had to come out of some turmoil. It came out of this bad crisis and we're still dealing with that. That's terrible. But there is a bright side, possibly, if we play this right. That about wraps things up. Thanks for watching. Make sure you guys comment your thoughts on everything below. Tell me what you think about this video. What do you think about Oregon? What do you think about these lockdowns, which are going pretty much straight down party lines? Also, make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you all next time.